I'm Bill and this is Tandem Cross, making good guns great. The Browning Buckmark is an excellent firearm, but it has one particularly frustrating element, and that's its sear spring. There's no nice way to put it. If you take the sear spring out, getting it back in can be a nightmare. Putting it back in the stock configuration requires you to pretty much take the whole thing apart and reassemble it, holding several parts in place while you compress the spring and install other parts. Even with your Buckmark on a stand or in a vise, the average human does not have enough hands to easily do all these things at once. The very first time I tried to do it, it took all of an afternoon and most of the next morning to get the job done. And even now, with more experience, it can be maddening. Now there's a common modification, flipping the sear spring over, that theoretically makes your trigger pull lighter. The spring is also easier to install this way, but it's still not exactly simple. It can take some fighting with the spring tension and fumbling around inside the frame to get it done. And even once you get it installed this way, it's not even guaranteed to work right. The trigger not resetting, the hammer not cocking back, concerns about safety are all potential issues with the sear spring flip. So what if there was a better way? What if you could reduce your trigger pull weight and have a sear spring that just dropped in with no fuss and no struggle? Well, you can with the new Gearbox Captured Sear Spring for Browning Buckmark by Tandem Cross. The Gearbox has a lighter spring than the stock one, which can lower your trigger pull weight up to a pound. It comes pre-compressed in a plastic housing, so you don't have to fight against the spring tension trying to muscle it into your firearm. Most importantly though, you don't have to remove any part of the fire control system except the old sear spring to install the gearbox. It just drops right in. It's incredibly easy, but there's a little bit of a trick to it. So let me show you how it's done. For this install, you will need a 330 seconds Allen wrench, a pick, and a thin punch. You might also find a rubber mallet and a punch block to be helpful. You'll also need an empty magazine and of course your new gearbox. As always, before working on your firearm, make sure it is clear and safe. Then grab your Allen wrench and use it to unscrew it, these two screws on top of the bolt. Right here and right here. Be careful not to lose the screws and lock washers and set them aside. And then you can remove the rail and set that aside too. Then make sure your safety is on fire and pull the bolt back and up slightly. It should easily come off the frame. The firing pin housing assembly and this small plastic plate will need to be removed from it if they didn't already come out on their own. And then you can set all three aside. Now insert your empty magazine and pull the trigger to drop the hammer. And then eject the empty mag. Right here above the safety switch, you can see the end of a retaining pin. Use the punch to push that out. If it's stiff, this is where you might find the mallet and punch block helpful. and you can just tap it out like this. Here's the pin, set that aside. Then pull the punch out of the frame. I recommend holding your firearm upside down while you do this because the sear spring could come flying out. Once you have the punch out, grab your gearbox. Orient it as shown with the cutout side towards the left and the slotted side towards the front. Then with the gearbox tipped forward slightly, drop it into the space where the sear spring used to be, rotating it back to vertical as you do.
Now hold the gearbox in place with the hole through it and the frame lined up and replace the pin you just punched out. Just like when it was coming out, it can sometimes be stiff going back in, so feel free to tap it with your mallet. Once the gearbox is in place, use the pick to pull the forward facing leg of the spring over into the slot in the front of the gearbox. You should hear a slight click when it's lined up. At this point, if you're confident in your work, you could just start the reassembly, but I recommend the following steps to make sure the gearbox is in place and providing spring tension correctly. So use your 3/32 seconds Allen wrench to remove the right side grip plate. Remove the magazine release spring. And remove the trigger return spring and the trigger bar. Then use your finger or your punch to push the sear forward. If it feels nice and stiff, then you've installed it correctly. If it feels like there's little to no tension on it, the leg of the spring may not have been pulled over into the slot correctly, and you'll have to try that again. But if your sear is under spring tension correctly, you can now put the trigger bar back into place. Make sure the disconnect is hooked over the trigger bar. Then replace your trigger return spring. And then the mag release spring. and then the grip plate. Now cock your hammer back and set the bolt back on top of the firearm. Now grab that plastic plate and set it up against the post at the back of the bolt, making sure that the hole on the post lines up with the hole in the plate. Grab your firing pin housing and insert the tapered tip of the spring rod into the hole in the plastic plate. Pull back on the firing pin housing, compressing the spring, and lower the housing into the bolt as you do. Now you can put the rail back on top of the bolt, and replace the two screws. And then if everything moves the way you expect it to, you're done. So you've seen how to install it, but maybe you're wondering, is it really that easy? And I get that. You know, a slow, methodical instructional video, it doesn't really show you how much time you're saving. So why don't we do some time trials? I'll film myself removing the stock sear spring and then reinstalling it. And removing the stock sear spring and replacing it with a gearbox. 
Then I'll run the footage side by side with a timer to show you exactly how much time you're saving. So you've seen how easy the gearbox is to install and how much time it saves. But does it really lower your trigger pull weight? To find that out, I'm going to do a little experiment. I have here this trigger pull weight tester. You hook the metal rod around your trigger and then you pull. And it shows you how heavy your pull was. It can also take an average of a series of pulls. So I'm going to use the pull weight tester on four different combinations of products. I'll test it on a fully stock buckmark, one with the gearbox installed, one with the stock sear spring but a victory trigger, and one with both the victory trigger and the gearbox. Then we'll compare the pull weights and you can see just how big a difference tandem cross products make. First, the fully stock gun. Next, the one with the stock trigger and the gearbox. Then, one with the victory trigger and the stock sear spring. Finally, one with the victory trigger and the gearbox. The results are undeniable. The gearbox alone makes a significant difference, but combined with the victory trigger, it can cut your pull weight nearly in half. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions about this video, be sure to let us know in the comments. And don't forget to click like and subscribe, and the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you get notifications whenever we upload new content. You can also find us elsewhere on the internet, like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, you can find the gearbox and other parts for Buckmark and other guns at www.tandemcross.com. Until next time.